Hey folks, well, this is getting real, real fast. Today, it's official. There's been an official announcement come down here in Canada, in the province of Ontario, where we live. Premier Doug Ford has announced new strict measures to put an end to the truck protest in Ottawa and the blockades on the bridges at the border crossings in Windsor and in Sarnia. New actions are being taken now to halt the disruptive vaccine mandate protest. And Doug Ford says there will be consequences for non-compliance. Doug Ford also says that the state of emergency will give police the power and tools to put an end to the recent protests that'll make it illegal to block the movement of goods and services by blocking borders, ports, bridges, highways, and railways. And he says, and I quote, your right to make a political statement does not outweigh the right of hundreds of thousands of workers to earn a living. He also said the new laws won't affect their rights to protest peacefully. Now, for the past couple of weeks, our capital city of Ottawa here in Canada has had an ongoing 24-7 non-stop honking of horns, disruptions in the streets. Uh, the main uh, core of the city has, has uh, been disrupted for the last 10 days or so, and uh, it's getting you know, out of hand, and the people of Ottawa are they're fed, fed up. up. And their protest has expanded and gathered momentum and support, causing a major disruption of the flow of traffic of goods and services across our border. Now, it's reported that over $700 million crosses between the United States and Canada, both directions, $700 million a day. A day. At that, at, at that bridge uh, in, uh, in Windsor. And that has disrupted the supply chain after five full days. What's that? Three and a half bill, right? Three and a half billion dollars, I think. Anyway, uh, you know, that's, it, this is serious and it is definitely, it's getting out of hand and uh, can totally understand why, you know, the people want to put a, a, an end to this. Stephen Waskowski, the president of the Canadian Truckers Alliance, he says they don't support this, what's going on. He said most of the truckers, they just want to get back to work. They're on the road and they're being blocked. They can't move to do their job. And most truckers don't support the blockades and the protests uh, that are happening uh, that represent the Canadian Truckers Alliance. They're only allowed to drive so many hours a day, the truckers are. They have to log in all of their hours. And uh, it's been reported that the delays at the bridges and in the city, uh, places where they're trying to get to, where there's blocked roads and so forth, uh, is causing major delays for the truckers, having to just sit there in their truck. And they're only allowed to log on so many uh, hours of driving every day. So, and but, that causes another problem, right? Where... Um, once their hours are up, they have to find a place to park from where they're parking, waiting in line. And then they try to carry on the next day from where they left off. So it's definitely creating bottlenecks now. We would said in a recent video that we didn't think that the food shortages were as a result of this trucking protest, uh, which is now not turned into a trucker's protest. It's an overall uh, protest and it, it is gathering momentum. Um, but uh, it does seem now that they are actually disrupting the supply chains and uh, also the food supply chain. This could lead to unprecedented food shortages in the supply chain. Keep watching. This is getting real, real fast. Now make note, we do support people's rights to freedom of speech and to peaceful protests. Make no mistake about that. But these measures and these new temporary laws that they're putting into place, they're going to go through quickly, through legislation, and they're going to make those laws permanent in order to prevent the future weaponization of trucks and vehicles on our roads, our bridges, our border crossings, and our railways and so forth. It's going to be illegal to block traffic of any kind. So this could put an end to the way in which um, protest groups gather public support and public attention. 
Now, hopefully this is going to put an end to these supply chain disruptions that are taking place. And since we're already seeing the effects of the shortages, you know, of, of workers and whatnot uh, in various industries and the economy right across the, the economy from manufacturing to shipping, all the faucets of the supply chain have taken a great big hit in the last two years. And the effects of what we've seen happening over the past few weeks, it's going to be felt for a long time after this. Retailers are concerned because they're not receiving their normal shipments. Consumers are getting concerned because they're seeing their the materials that they want to buy, purchase and whatnot, products they want to get, they're not there on the shelves. Uh, in the grocery stores, we're seeing holes in the shelves. We're seeing shortages. We're seeing uh, uh, uh products that are being spread out and instead of being say six cans deep they're only two cans deep but spread out across a four foot shelf and this just shows that there are the supplies are getting less they're not as abundant as they were and they're trying to spread things out to make it uh not appear that there's you know any kind of shortages yeah there's some brands that aren't even on the shelves anymore and other brands they're limiting how much they ship to each store you know how like when they limit the amount of one or two per person that kind of a thing so rationing has begun so you may feel that this is just a temporary condition caused by the pandemic, but are we seeing the full picture here? Are we aware of what's actually going on behind the curtain? The dynamics at play here are enormous. It's on a global scale. The politics, the logistics. What do you think? We don't think that this is going to end overnight. This is going to last for quite a while. The events that have just happened over the last couple of weeks, those are going to trickle down for months, in our opinion. The rippling effects are just going to go on for quite a while, and, and they'll surface sooner or later. So there's really no easy fix for this. It's a global supply chain issue, and it's going to take time for it to sort itself out. That's the flaw, is that it's a global economy and a global supply chain. Countries are so interdependent now on so many other countries for their sustenance. At one time, a country could grow its own food and consume its own food. And now we're growing food and putting it into a, you know, a conglomeration, into a cooperative, so to speak, and, and then uh, you know, sharing that with the, the, the global supply chain. And it's uh, when a kink goes into that supply chain, the bottlenecks happen and shortages and, and delays. So with this in mind, we're reviewing our food stocks. We're looking at what we have and what we're probably going to need later down the road because we feel that we don't want to get stuck having to go to the store and not have things there that we need. So we're going to be stocking up on those items that we feel we're a little bit, you know, in short supply of. Uh, we have planned for the long term, and uh, but there are some items that uh, we're going to rethink uh, for the long term. And, and by long term, we don't mean, you know, like the 48-day voluntary challenge that we underwent there. Uh, we're talking about long term, meaning many, many months and uh, possibly a year or even more. So we're stocking up now. Well, we've done the 48 days and that's given us the confidence to know that we can go at least that long without having to go to the stores. But the truth is, we don't know what next month is going to bring. So we're looking at making sure that we have enough stocks and things stocked up that we don't have to worry about that. This is getting serious now, and there's a few other things that we plan on doing to help beef up our stores. One of them is we're going to grow a bigger garden this year. Yeah, and start growing indoors. Yeah, we want to do some microgreens and sprouting. And we're looking at getting chickens and possibly rabbits. And doing a lot more canning, uh, storing all of that fresh produce and, and whatnot, putting that into the cans, putting that up on the shelves for long-term storage. Well, you know, that really brings us to something that we never thought that we would be talking about. And I hate to even mention this word, but we've had to discuss rationing. And it could get to the point where those holes in the shelves 
And those delivery delays uh, become a prolonged and an exasperated situation. And we're not going to wait around for that to happen. We've talked about it and we decided that we're better off rationing now and practice the rationing and um, living on less food than waiting until we're forced to. We have enough of our stores, enough of those long-term essentials that we're good for the long term. Um, but there are some items that we would like to, you know, restock up on and uh, make sure that we have enough for seriously for a, a long, long term. And uh, this is something where we never thought we would say these words that we have to look at rationing and rations. It's something that's foreign to so many people. Um, we're we're going to go over our meal quantities. We're going to take inventory, take stock of what we have, and redo the inventory, go over all of our meals, all the quantities, that kind of things. We're going to try to find ways to stretch our dollar, to stretch our meals, stretch those food supplies. And we're going to seriously study and research the Great Depression and what folks did during the Great Depression to get by. And the World War II rations and how people made that food, the small amounts that they received, last longer. Now, we're not trying to be fear mongers here. We're not trying to scare anyone, but it is getting scary. It's better to be prepared and not need to ration rather than having to ration and not being prepared because the store shelves are bare. How many years or even decades has it been where like the whole population, almost the whole population needs to worry about where their food supply is coming from? It's been generations since anybody's had to worry about rationing and food shortages of, you know, to any great extent. And this is, this is unprecedented. You know, the last rationing did not end until the early 1950s in the UK, in England, after World War II. It went from around 1940 right through to 1954, where everybody was rationed over a 10-year period. And in the United States and Canada as well, we had rations here as well. Uh, the, can you imagine having to be on a weekly ration? Could you get by on as little as, say, a half pound of sugar a week? Two ounces of tea? Two ounces of butter, two ounces of lard, quarter pound of margarine. Three ounces of cheese. A quarter pound of bacon and a pound of meat per week. Let's hope it doesn't come to this point, folks. Be prepared. We're going to go out and we're going to prepare even more so than what we have been. We're going to stock up, make sure all the things that we think we're possibly in short supply of over the long term are going to get restocked. These are strange and unprecedented times that we're in. And with proper planning, you can be prepared and we can all get through this. That's all for this one. We'll keep you posted. I'm Glenn. I'm Maureen. We'll see you next time. Over and out. Take care.